the translations are out for My Hero Academia Manga Chapter 411. And let me just say this, that this is coming out a little bit unusual. It's coming out a lot earlier than I thought. But what isn't normal in this chapter is the fight that we're getting between Tumor Shigaraki and Izuku Midoriya. As we're about to see potentially the final confrontation between the two commence. And let me just say that it's going to be action packed and you'll get to see why that's the case but first right after this hey guys how's it going it is your boy manga man drew and i'm here to do my manga review for my hero academia manga chapter 411 titled the greatest evil and the title of this chapter pretty much describes the person in question, which is Tower Shigaraki, as in this chapter, we get to see why he is the greatest evil and why he is the most dangerous character in the story right now and we're going to be seeing a lot of action between Deku as well as Tora as well as getting a little bit more into what the final fight will entail. So let's just dive right into the review and really talk about what's going on in this chapter. And the first few pages are more or less a recontextualization of what we saw at the end of the last chapter, where we get this sort of like shocking moment where Banjo is talking to Deku about Shinomori and how Dangerous Sense is gone. And we get to see it actually being taken in this chapter as we see the vestiges are talking to each other and how they're discussing about how this is the final fight, this is the fight of the next generations and how they have to stop Shigaraki here once and for all and deal with his regeneration, we get the moment moment where Shinomori gets captured or stolen as because he has danger sense he's able to sense the danger incoming and push everyone out of the way and pretty much sacrifice himself and being taken by Tomura making sure that the rest of the quirks as well as one for all is still relatively intact and it's very cool that we're actually getting to see more of a actual symbolic representation of quirks being taken instead of the more literal one. We could have implied, if not straight up shown, that the quirk was stolen by the energy coming out of Tomura's hole, indicating that a quirk was stolen, but it's very cool that we actually get to see it in this chapter. And we really get to see how Shinomori is willing to sacrifice himself to save others, a characteristic that describes a lot of heroes in the world of my academia and just heroes in general. And all of that was shown in a flashback as we cut back to the present where we really get to see the vestiges really coming to terms with the fact that, oh no, she was stolen. This means that his hatred is stronger than literally all of our wills combined, as well as Tober himself realizing, oh, so this is the power that my master wanted so badly? Uh, it's not really anything. And what happens next really emphasizes the difference between all for one when it comes to the person and Tomura. Because as we see Deku using Black Whip, Fajin, and Gear Shift to make black chains, we get to see Tomura actually use Danger Sense in this moment. And he realizes that, oh, so this was how you were able to dodge all of my attacks. Okay, this is neat. As we get the real difference between Tomura and All For One, where Tomura just says that, oh yeah, I'm going to decay you first. As we get a double paid spread of Tomura just sending out a massive attack as Deku was able to shield himself in a black whip like cage, sending him back to a new location that is going to be potentially the final battleground that Deku needs to stand his ground or the entirety of Japan will be lost. And what's interesting about this moment is that you have Tomura in this moment just reiterating a phrase that Deku told him about how he saw him crying and that he can't pretend he didn't see you. And these are words that Deku spoke about towards Tomura, but Tomura responds with no. That's not me anymore. I am not a human being. I am a destruction. I am the monster that lurks under your bed. So open your eyes as the attack just throws Deku away from the location where they are at right now. And as we see that Deku is just being thrown this hard, we actually get to see the real extent of the power that was really being held back and thrown at Deku in this moment. 
because as Deku just reminisces about the mask, and we get a better understanding of why he put the mask on, because he wanted to be able to breathe with all of the crashing waves around him, but he laments on the idea that this was the mask given to him by All Might, and then you just have the second user talking about, yeah, 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 the mask is cool and all, uh, but we need to really understand like how powerful Tomura is right now, because do you know where you are right now? As Deku comes to the realization, as he looks behind him, and he sees the giant mountain, Fuji. And just for a little bit of clarification, Fuji is... And just to understand the scope of how much power was thrown at Deku in this moment to send him this far, uh, they were near the ocean. Mount Fuji is a little bit more inward, more like inland, and the location where they were is a lot further south than where Mount Fuji is. So Deku was sent flying a significant distance in just a singular attack. And that just shows how powerful Tomura is right now. But also the implication is that this was a part of his plan because if he's able to decay Mount Fuji, which is most likely an active volcano, even in the world of My Hero Academia, it could spew lava all across Japan, causing even more damage more faster and quickly than Tomer Shigaraki could have done on his own. And this is just setting up more for what this fight is going to be. It's not just gonna be Deku just fighting off Tomura and just beating him down, but also making sure that Tomura doesn't destroy the world of Japan as he knows it. And while this is all happening, we even get the vestiges really coming to a realization that, yeah, this is getting real bad. Yeah, Tomura can steal the quirks, and even the quirk factors from one for all, but the strength of one for all actually comes from the quirk itself. So even if all of the other quirks are gone, as long as one for all still remains, the power itself is still there. And this could be setting up the idea that Deku may lose all the other quirks inside of one for all, but may still withstand or withstand, or that he may still withhold the power of one for all inside of him, but also just getting a better understanding for the fact that Deku is not going to be weakened by the fact that he lost Danger Sense on a physical sense, but that now he'll be able to take a lot more damage as we see a whole bunch of blood just flowing from his head as well as other parts of his body. And at this moment, we really can see how dangerous Tomura is by the fact that we get in who is just scared to the point where we see his expressions of fear through his words as they are all wavery and wavy as he just thinks to himself that yeah we just need to get out of here we just need to run and if we don't run there's going to be no escape for us he touches us one more time it will be the end of us so in is just clutching his chest and is just terrified and petrified and that petrification gets worse as Tomura arrives on the scene and confirms that he can actually see the vestiges of One For All talking to Deku as he talks about, ah, so you're the ghost I see. You've gotten stronger by fling, so that's why I'm going to destroy you right now. Because by the end of all of this, I'm going to make this entire place a wasteland just like Spinner wanted, as we get another double page spread of just all of the destruction behind Tomer Shigaraki as his decay is getting closer and closer to Mount Fuji, as nothing but destruction is left in his wake. So yeah, uh, Tomura is extremely dangerous, even to the point of literally causing the vestiges inside of One For All, or more specifically in, to probably shit their pants. And even to the point of them literally saying that he is not even the successor of All For One, he's just a walking disaster, destruction incarnate. And as this is all being said, you just have Deku in the final page just confronting him at this moment. And the thing that he thinks about is the words that Uroraka told him about how she has no clue about what's going on in Toga's head, but he ends this chapter by calling Tomura human as we see Danger Sense going off around Tomura, as we see that black whip is wrapping around Deku's body as his armor begins to break and shatter off, indicating that he may be using the full power of one for all and not just Fajin and gear shift. So yeah, this was an awesome chapter. A lot of what this chapter consisted of action and fighting between Deku and Tomura, but that action and fighting looked amazing. 
We get to see the character of Tomura and how he values just killing Deku outright instead of being all worried about stealing one for all. But that he can still steal the quirks and did so to put Deku at a state of being weaker but making it easier for him to kill, which is something that All For One would never do, but also just showing the threat level of how much destruction he can do and that without Danger Sense, he has the capability of one-shotting and potentially killing Deku outright. Even to the point of showing Tomura still has a level of intelligence luring Deku to a location that would make it easier to turn Japan into a wasteland faster and really just showing the threat level and really showing his threat level by destroying everything behind him as he is approaching Deku and even instilling the fear inside of the vestiges themselves. But even with all of that, we do get to see Deku still retaining the character that he always was. Someone who's still willing to fight to the end, but still views Tomura Shigaraki as a human, and if he is still a human, that means he can still be saved. And the next chapter, we may be getting more of that development from Deku as he's fighting against Tomura, and we're going to get something that is even more spectacular when it comes to the battle sequences as seen in the chapter. But overall, really did enjoy this chapter. It's primarily action, but I also did enjoy the dialogue as well as the back and forth between Deku and Tomura, really just showing how they are each and other's opposites, but also have parallels between them as well. And once again, getting to see the action just looks amazing, and I can't wait to see how this battle is going to continue within the next chapter. But yeah, that's all I really have to say about the topic. Let me ask you this, what did you think of the chapter? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? And are you ready to see more of the battle between Deku and Tomura? Leave your thoughts down below, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this. Do all that cool jazz, and hopefully I'll be able to catch you in my next video. Goodbye!